Making money from open source is hard because you are mostly attracting audience who are looking to get free stuff, right? But if you do it right, you can actually turn open source into profitable businesses. So in this video, I will share six different strategies people use to make money from open source. Hopefully this will help you if you are running an open source or thinking of starting an open source project. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. Number one, we have sponsorships or donations. This one is the most common one where companies pay you to put their logos in your website or to support you in general. Let's see an example of this project called Qualify, which lets you self-host your projects. And if you browse their website, you can see a section for sponsors. And here you can see they have 170,000 monthly visitors which is very lucrative to a lot of businesses, right? Because they want to be in front of these developers. Uh, so if you want to be a sponsor, you can check this out. Judging by this, looks like they are making around $4,000 a month from these sponsorships. And here you can see the tiers they have. So for example, you can just donate them a dollar or a $5 or 15. But if you scroll down, you can see for $100, they will put your website logo in their website for $200 there will be a big logo right so the websites we were seeing here they are probably paying qualify $200 a month to put their logos here so if you have a project that gets a lot of visitors you can definitely use this method to make a few thousand dollars uh, for your project the second way of making money through open source is offering premium features so the idea is you will offer some of the features for free and which will be open source and some of the features you will sell for a premium price. This is the same model I use on my own project called Retro UI where all these components like button, card, checkbox, everything is open source and you can check them out on GitHub. But if you want something extra, we have something called blocks. And here you'll find more premium features like blocks. Uh, for example, this is a statistics block. We'll also have templates. And there's a Figma kit. And to get access to all these features, you need to pay us a $99 lifetime fee. So this is another popular way how you can make money through your open source projects. The third option is offering dual licensing. I have written it dual, but it can be the fee for our any variation of licensing depending on your project but the basic idea is you offer different licenses for different type of users so for example let's say you provide MIT license or free license for people like students or just personal projects and you offer a different premium license for companies and commercial usage so let's say someone is a student who is using a product for a university project they can use your product for free, but let's say you are offering this to an enterprise who's going to use it in their project. So you can charge them like $500 or $5,000 a month uh, for that, right? A famous example of this model is Redis, where their core version database is open source and they offer a few different licenses for that. But if you want to use their proprietary products, then you have to get their Redis cloud licensing. Which basically means if you are just using Redis for your projects, then you can use it for free. But if you are a server company and want to offer Redis as a service, then I think you need to get a different license for that. Number four is providing hosted services. This is a very popular one for open source projects. And I'm sure you probably have seen this before where there will be a self-hosted option so you can just download the project and host it in your server or you can just use their hosted service and pay them a certain fee a popular example for this would be superbase where it is completely open source and you can host it yourself you can probably find that in the documentation so here you can see this self-hosting option so you can just learn more from here and they will guide you through how to host it in your own website so you can either use docker or a bunch of other options but hosting it yourself will probably take a lot of time and resources things might go wrong there might be security issues things might break 
So the easiest option to get started is just using their hosted service, right? So if you just go to superbase.com, uh, go to pricing, and here you can see they are selling this pro plan for $25, team plan for almost $600, and there's like an enterprise plan. This is how projects like Superbiz makes money, even though they are completely free and open source. The fifth option is offering support slash consultation. This is very suitable for smaller projects or teams where let's say some company is using a project and they need some custom support uh, from you, right? So you can tell them your time. Let me show you an example of this project called Cookie Cutter, where I believe this helps you to start a Python project. Uh, it is open source and the code is available on GitHub. But if you read their readme file, scroll down. If you need an urgent response, you can contact one of their team members for consultation and custom developments. So their GitHub account is linked here. And from here you can get their contact information. So I'm pretty sure if any company needs a custom support, they can contact them through this email and she can give them an invoice depending on her time. The sixth and last option is selling to a larger company where you probably build the tool, but you don't have a lot of use case for monetizing it. But a lot of time, a big companies just have random free products for them to to use it as a marketing tool. An example of this is this project called Shatsian. This is a very popular UI library. You can see they have 87,000 GitHub stars. Crazy. This project is completely free and was built by this guy called Shatsian. And later this project was sold to Vercel. So now if you use Shatsian and check out some of their components. On the right you can see a deployment banner which takes you to Vercel. So anyone using Vercel will probably now be tempted to use Vercel for hosting, right? And this looks like a new update of Katsian because previously I believe there was a button over here that says open to V0 and it will take you to V0 which is another product by Vercel. So you can see how this was a very good purchase for Vercel. Now they can use it to funnel users to their uh, paid product. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if I missed anything or which one you use in your own projects. Uh, I would love to hear them out. And yep, I think that's all for this video. I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.